I was thinking a lot about that situation this week as we're praying for the broken places in our communities here. And you see an event like this that's just so, so traumatic on so many levels. And um, it's sad to see what the reaction can be. This is one of the reasons it's so good to get off social media. It's sad to see some of the reactions that can come with this kind of thing because it, we end up, nobody knows what to do, right? So people are reacting and just saying, they're typing stuff in all different ways, wanting how can I do this or, or, or this is to, to blame or this is to blame. Well, one of the things that ends up happening is that prayer itself gets denigrated and like scorned. And I understand sort of why it happens, but it's really unfortunate. So a lot of people who don't believe in prayer, sometimes people are like, I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to type that I'm praying because we're kind of helpless to do a whole lot in these type of situations. And, uh, and then sometimes people can go, prayer doesn't do anything. Look at these people were praying and nothing happened, you know. And it's just like, you know, that's an easy, cheap shot for people to take in the world, and I get that. But we as believers, as people of faith, need to never stop praying. It is one of the things we are told to do over and over and over again in Scripture. This is kind of our baseline, isn't it? Our baseline is we pray because there's a whole lot of broken things in this world that are just too big for us. So that's where we go, Jesus, help. I don't know what to do. So it is totally appropriate that we pray in situations that we don't know how to fix. And this is uh, one of those things. And this morning, as we kick off our our time of prayer and fasting for our community, I want to just keep that in mind. Um, And uh, so I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, There is a a quote that's attributed to C.S. Lewis. I don't think that he said it. It was something like this. Prayer doesn't change circumstances. It changes me. This was in the Shadowlands movie. I'm sure some of you guys saw, which is really cool. Um, And and he he said something to this effect. And um, when we talk about prayer and whether or not it has any effect, this is what a lot of people come back to. And I want to tell you this morning, I don't think this is true. I don't think this is biblical. Um, the, the, The God I see in Scripture is very interactive. And it's hard to know how to make sense of the, the, the narrative of scripture if you pull out the interactivity. You have to sort of apply a different lens to the Bible in order to make that work. Um, it seems to me all over the Bible, people ask something and then God responds. You know what my favorite scenes is in Exodus 3 and 4 when Moses is at the burning bush and they're having this give and take conversation. And Moses is like, well, what happens if he's trying to get out of the mission to go? You know, what happens if they don't believe me? Well, here, you you take the stick. And and like, you know, all of these things happen. And he's like, and then he keeps coming up with excuses. And then God is like losing his patience with Moses. You know, like that whole thing. There is a definite give and take. There's a definite sort of sequence that's happening. Moses says something, then God responds. Then Moses responds. Then God responds. This I believe is really happening, and I think this is how God deals with us. I don't think he's hovering over in some other dimension without reaching into where we are. Does that make sense? So um, I, I don't think this, this whole thing about it, the circumstances not changing, I don't think it's true. In fact, I think he is, invites us to pray and to ask him things. This is kind of a, a trippy scene. Joshua read through this last week, but just real quick. In Daniel 10, Daniel sees this vision and he has this burden for his people, so he begins to fast and pray. And this is what ends up happening. An angel comes to him and says, Oh, Daniel, man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, because he was kneeling. Stand up, for now I have been sent to you. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood up, trembling, because he was scary, I'm sure. Then he said to me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart uh, to understand and you humbled yourself before God, your words, meaning your prayers, have been heard, and I have come because of your words. Do you get that? I have come because of your words. Just let, let that sink in. There, there's, there's some ramifications here. He came because Daniel prayed. In other words, you step back and think, well, what if he hadn't prayed? Well, I don't know. Maybe you would have come anyway, but it doesn't seem that way to me. It seems like he responded directly to something that Daniel did. 
That he responds, and I, I see this kind of interactivity all the time. In fact, this is what God invites us into. He invites us to pray. He invites us to pray his will so that he can respond. One thing happened here with, with Jesus demonstrates how Jesus rolled this way too. Now, as they went out of Jericho, a great multitude followed him, and behold, two blind men sitting at, uh, by the road uh, were there, and when they heard Jesus was uh, passing by, cried out, They they cried out saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. Then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet. But they cried out all the more saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. So Jesus stood still and called them and said, what do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, that our eyes may be open. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. I want you to see what happened here. Jesus had compassion on people who were praying and that's why he did the thing. One of the things that that always just amazes me when I read through the gospel is the number of times that Jesus, this is what seems like to me, okay? I I don't understand all this, guys, and I know I'm gonna step on some theological toes, but this is what seems like to me. It seems like Jesus is going off script, in fact, the very first miracle that he did seems totally off script to me. Uh, you can stone me for this because I don't know what to do with it all. But here's what happens. He's at a wedding. Apparently a family friend. Do you remember this? He's at a wedding and like this is a huge social event with all kinds of like, you know, st- cultural things tied to it. So to, to be hospitable be really hospitable is a big, big deal. And so they're at this wedding feast which lasts a few days and the hosts run out of wine. And Mary apparently is their friend. So what does she do? She comes to Jesus and, and, and go, she goes full mom on him. <laughs> Jesus, they're out of wine. So what are you saying? They're out of wine. And he's like, it's not my time. What are you... It's funny, it translates as a woman, what are you doing? It just makes me laugh in our modern vernacular. Woman, what are you saying to me? Like, mom, yeah! You know, it's so funny. He's like the king of the universe and he still has a mom, you know? <laughs> so she puts pressure on him. He tries to get out of it. And she says, Jesus, Jesus, ah, okay, fine. Fine. And he goes, thank you. <laughs> so he turns the water into wine. Like, guys, like, seriously, I mean, it's a funny scenario to me, but it's really true. He did not want to do it, and she prevailed upon him because she kept asking. Isn't that interesting? Jesus allows himself to be moved by compassion when we pray. And this is the way he rolls all the way through. This is way he's going around. He's teaching, and people are coming to him, can you heal me? And he's looking, he's like, oh, he's moved to compassion. Okay, be healed. And then he's like, shh, please don't tell anybody. <laughs> I, don't really think, I don't think he's going off script on some of this stuff because his heart is so big and he wants to bless so bad that he allows himself to be moved by you and me. So this whole idea that he's somehow so, uh, of course he's not like us, he's not human, he's greater, and I can't even fathom all that it means for him to be God. But you know what it doesn't mean? It doesn't mean that he's a part. It does not mean that. It does not mean that he cannot relate to us. It does not mean that he's not with us right here and now in our experience. I don't understand how this works. I just know that he takes us into his counsel and he says, please ask so that I can respond. This is the way that Jesus lived and it's the way that God seems to rule the universe. Now that puts a lot of responsibility on my shoulders to go, ha ha, God. Now he's still God, right? Thankfully, I'm so glad that it's not all up to you and I but we do have some actual real responsibility here to pray. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. We we can have confidence to ask and he hears us. You know what? John Wesley believed so much in this principle. Here's what he said. He said, God doesn't do anything unless we pray first. (laughs) Now, I, I don't know, is, he, is that going too far? That might be going too far. I don't know that I would get on board with that. But I don't know that that's too far. Like, like too, too. I don't know that he's like way outside the bounds there. Because he, he asks us, and he asks us, pray. Sometimes you don't have because you haven't asked. I'm knocking at the door. Hello, open the door. 
talk to me, ask, let's work together. In other words, it's a really big deal. Here's what David experienced. Psalmist poor, actually I don't think this was David, this is a different psalmist. Hear my prayer, Lord. Let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me when I'm in distress. Turn your ear to me when I call. Answer me quickly. For the Lord will rebuild Zion and appear in his glory. He will respond to the prayer of the destitute. Do you hear that? He will respond to the prayer of the destitute. He will not despise their plea. This morning, we're going to pray according to God's will. This was Jesus' mission, and we know it's his will to see the ruins rebuilt, to see the broken places in our families, in our society, in Lane County, in our own hearts, those broken places he wants to rebuild, he wants to heal. We know that is his heart. We know that's his will because he told us it is. That was the mission of Jesus himself. And you guys know we're an active congregation. We are involved in a lot of different things that we talk about all the time. But we want to take these next few days, starting this morning, and pray into those things and not just do. You know, we want to to pray because all of the stuff that even we're involved in is too big for us. So uh, what what we're going to do... is, uh, is pray through these different aspects then of Isaiah 61 because we know it's his will. So we're going to pray according to his will and we're going to expect that he's actually going to hear our prayer and then he's actually going to respond. See, this gives me hope here that he actually hears me. Isn't that good? Okay, he really does hear you, you guys. He really does want to answer these prayers. So um, what we're going to do is focus specifically on some stubborn areas. Some of those things that have come up. This is where this began, actually, as we were preaching through this series, and we're like, you know, there's some of these things that have just come up um, within our congregation, within some of our own hearts, that are like, we just need to pray at that thing, because, you know, enough is enough, you know? Some of these stubborn things were places where we might be stuck. That's what we're going to focus on. Um, So... um, what we're going to ask you guys to do today, and I'm sorry for, the, for those of you who are visiting, this is going to be a little out of your comfort zone, um, and for a lot of you introverts, I'm kind of an introvert myself, this kind of thing is a bit out of my comfort zone, but I think this is important for us to do, to pray together, because this is what, this is, we, we, we could just all sit at home with our laptops and, you know, watch Tim Keller or your favorite preacher, listen to Hillsong, and have a private little service. That's not church, though. See, we're, we're the body of Christ, so we're going we're gonna to interact, even if it is a little bit outside of our comfort zone. Um, so I'm going to ask Pastor Joshua to come up, and what we're going to do, what I'm going to have you guys do first, we're going to pray in different areas and different groups. We're going to move around a little bit this morning, and we're going to start by praying to, to bring good news to the poor. Because remember, Isaiah 61 starts, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because he has anointed us to preach good news to the poor. This is where he begins. So we're gonna pray for two aspects here of this verse. First, that we would actually share the good news. And second, that God would lift up people in our community out of poverty. We're gonna pray for those two things and, and that uh, poverty, financial, relational, systemic, all of these things. So I want to ask you guys, can you stand up? Can you look for two or three people around you? And we're going to take the next two or three minutes here to pray together for these things. So you can just lead out. It can be quick prayers. You just lead out right into it. Let's pray for all of this stuff you see. Father, we thank you that you're hearing the prayers that are going up right now, Lord. We thank you, God, for boldness coming upon us, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to share the good news of the kingdom and to see poverty eradicated, Lord, relationally, systemically, and in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so you can find your way back to your seat. Now we're going to change it up just a little bit. I mean, don't get too comfortable, but you can at least get, you know, somewhat geographically to a spot where you felt you belonged a moment ago before we reassign you. 
See what we're doing there? All right, here's the next one that we're going to do. We're going to, this time we're going to do some identificational intercession. Doesn't that sound awesome? All that means is you're going to stand in for someone that you know of that is battling cancer or another disease that, uh, where, where we need to see healing and breakthrough. So if you have someone that is close to you or that you're related to um, that is right now battling a disease or cancer, would you just stand up? to stand up for the, on their behalf. And then those of you that are around them, I know it's like all of us, isn't it? There was, there was less in first service, but uh, I like these ratios. Let's go for it. So those of you that are not standing, just pop up and come around these guys, and, and we're just going to pray with them. We're going to pray for these people by name so you can share the name of who you're standing up for, or if it's yourself, then say, hey, pray for me. And we're going to go after you here for a couple of moments right now. So just ready, go. Amen. Amen. So I want you guys to be seated again. We're going to keep moving. We're, we also, in this same vein, want to pray for those who are struggling. Uh, it, just like we did identificational here, whether it's you or somebody like a family member who is struggling with a severe disability, we want to pray uh, for, for you guys as well, for the comfort of the Lord to come, for clarity and for breakthrough in those areas. So if that's you, can you stand up and people around you, we're going to ask to come and join you in prayer. Someone you love. Yes, if that's you or someone you love uh, dearly, can you stand and Repeat again? Okay. For those who, who might be dealing with a, a severe disability, uh, something like that, um, or against someone in your family, um, can you stand up? And we're going to do the same thing. If you're near them, can you come and, and pray? All right? I know we're having you move a lot, but you see them? Can you surround them? Good job, guys. Father, we thank you that you're hearing every prayer that's coming up right now. Lord, we don't pretend to know always how to pray, but we are lifting up every one of these situations for your grace, for your wisdom, for your breakthrough, for your care, and for your desire and will to be done, Lord. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, you can stay uh, in your loose-knit group for a minute because our next assignment is going to be groups of five or six. And uh, so, yeah, get in a group of about five or six people. Go ahead, just, just, just pick. Just look around and be like, you look great, and then count to five or six. And here's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to pray to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison for those who are bound. And um, these are things that we know that we've seen around us where people are bound, bound by addictions, alcohol, opioids, pornography, and busyness. How many of us love busyness? We talked about social media a moment ago, a total culture of distraction, workaholism, right? Running away from reality sometimes. So if people that are caught in these, in these addictive cycles, so we're going to go to town right now with praying for those and feel free um, in your circle to just be praying out um, however you want to pray, but we're just going after it. So go ahead and begin praying into these areas. We're going to stay in your groups, but now we're going to sw start switching our prayers. We're going to pray for those who mourn, those who have lost loved ones recently, and those who are dealing with broken relationships, especially in family. Keep going. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you're in the midst of every situation. Lord, thank you that you're hearing our prayers, God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, the next, uh, we're going to stay in the same groups here. The garment of praise instead of a faint spirit. We want to begin to lift up those who are struggling with mental illness, depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts. Um, we're engaging that, of course, as a church in many different ways. We, we, um, we're... Uh, Super excited about Elrod and different initiatives that are happening in the schools um, where, you know, God is moving, um, so you can lift those things up. Um, but I want you to also lift up those that you know of that are struggling right now. So feel free to pray by name, pray for those. And, and as you guys are praying, there's a point of uh, focus I want to bring that God would lift shame off of this whole situation. Just that... Uh, in fact, I'm just going to launch it that way and then let's go to groups. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we just ask, Lord, that you would lift shame off of these situations, these places where people have a faint spirit, Lord, be it through depression or anxiety or mental illness. And we just, we just declare that shame, you don't get to be a part of this in Jesus' name. And we're not going to judge people that are going through this. We're looking for you to bring healing, God. Amen? All right, go ahead and go to your groups. Let's just go to prayer and go after this.
We thank you, Lord, that you have a plan for all of this. We thank you that you haven't left us alone to figure it out. Lord, I pray that you would turn the tide of suicide in our region. Lord, I pray that that scourge would be done. Lord, I pray that you would minister to every heart. Lord, I pray that all the, the things that are popping up to help people, they would find access to, and there would be zero shame. Thank you, Lord. Can you guys start, start moving back to your seats here? We have one more thing we're going to do. Isaiah 61 talks about us becoming oaks of righteousness. So I want to pray that we would all become oaks of righteousness. Pray that we would grow up into mature, faithful disciples of Christ. Is anybody interested in that for themselves? Anyone? Okay, if you're interested in that, why don't you stand up? Now everyone's going to stand up because nobody doesn't want to stand up for that. I want to pray over all of us. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would help us become faithful in seeking you out and putting the things of your kingdom first in our lives. I pray, Lord, that we could become people who reach for the scriptures first before we reach for our phones. Lord, I pray that we'd become people that can shut out the noise and listen to you. Lord, I pray that we would have our priorities in the right places, Lord, and that we could open ourselves up to receive the beautiful healing touch that you have for each one of our hearts. All the things that are buried there, Lord, we thank you that you, you, are, a, you are a finder of lost and buried things. You can uproot the bad, Lord, and, and, and plant new, beautiful things inside of us. So we ask, Lord, that you would do that in us, and we believe you will because you said, he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it in the day of Christ Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Be seated, guys. All right. So uh, the ushers now are going to hand you a half sheet. So if the ushers, if you guys would start grabbing those and just start handing them out, I want everybody to leave with a half sheet today. And what's on that half sheet are the prayer points that we just went through, um, but with, uh, with a little bit greater detail. So like we have some specific, um, you know, we're praying for God to continue to bless Elrod. We're praying for God to bless um, the Every Child Banquet that's coming up so that we can keep engaging with foster care. So there's a little bit more um, uh, detail on there. So, um, but the back of the sheet of paper is also blank. Why? Because as we're praying through Isaiah 61, we want you to be writing those specific things that are in your heart where you're like, oh Lord, I'm praying for breakthrough for this person. I'm praying for this person by name that they're going to be saved. I'm praying for breakthrough in my life in this area. So, so you're going you're gonna to grab that little baby and you're going to hold on to it. And as we are fasting from social media, you're going to be twitchy anyway, and you're going to just pull that thing out of your back pocket, and you're going to be like, I'm going to read this thing, I'm going to pray through it. And that's what we're wanting to do. We want to be, we want to pray focused prayers. You know, we can pray general prayers, and he answers them, but it's generally hard to know what happened. See what I did there? But when we pray specific prayers, you can see the specific answers to prayer. Amen? So here's, here's what we've got, guys. So starting at sundown, we are entering three days of fasting and prayer. We're humbling ourselves before the Lord. And I want to encourage you that when you are fasting, which is part of that, you know, it says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, that humble themselves is almost always through fasting. That's, that's through the history of God with his people. When they say humble yourself, it means I'm humbling myself through fasting. And that pray without ceasing, when you are fasting before the Lord and coming towards him in this way, that, that, that rumble in your tummy, that counts as intercession. The whole time that we're fasting, it's an unceasing prayer unto these things. So, we're, so I just want you to know that every, every bit of your pain has a purpose. Now, some of you are going to have an incredible time with the Lord. You're going to encounter him and be more aware of his presence than you have been in a while. There's this really cool space that, that comes when you fast. Part of it is because, you know, you can't wait until you eat, so time just slows down. You've never had as much life that you can fit into a day as when you're fasting. You're like, this day has been nine weeks long. And it's filled with the presence of the Lord. So some of you are going to be more aware of the presence of the Lord in this season. It's going to be wonderful. Some of you, however, are not going to feel anything except for the rumbling of your stomach and a dull headache on day two. That's just a fact. Some of us are going to have that experience. But what I want you to know is that this isn't about having uh, an existential experience. 
although some of us will. This is about humbling ourselves before the Lord and saying, God, my strength isn't enough. My wisdom isn't enough. But you are enough. And unless you move, God, we have no hope. Unless you come and answer these prayers, Lord, then it's just going to remain as it's been. So I'm humbling myself, Lord, and I'm praying to you and saying, Lord, your, my hope is in you. So I want you to know that whether you have a really wonderful time fasting, which some of you will, or whether you have a challenging time fasting, which some of you will, or maybe a mixture of both, it's absolutely valuable and precious unto the Lord, and he is hearing our voice, and he will answer our prayers. Amen? So I just want to encourage you, it all counts. But keep that sheet with you. Keep that sheet with you. And when we come together on Wednesday night at 6.30, we're going to have a short time of prayer. And then we're going to share some testimonies of some of the things that God's already answered the prayer. Last, uh, last time we did this, it was wonderful. There were several people that, were bit, that we had written their names down. And they, they got saved in those three days. They gave their life to the Lord in those three days. That was amazing. There were a couple of healings that happened and some relationships that were turned around that had been locked up for years. And God restored relationship. So God answers prayer. It's going to be a wonderful time. So we'll come together and rejoice uh, at 6.30 on Wednesday together. And then afterwards, we'll go break our fasts. Oh, yeah. So let me pray over you guys. Are you guys ready to do this thing? Yeah. All right. It's going to be worth it. It's going to be fun. Red shared uh, last, uh, last service that uh, one of the things that he's done in the past and one of his early fasts was his, he had a really bad headache and his stomach was rumbling and he was getting kind of grumpy. And so he told his body, hey, you knock that off or I'm going to fast three more days. And so that worked for him. I, I, went, I go the other way and I tell myself like, I know, baby, it hurts so bad, but we're going to get through this and then I'm going to give you whatever you want. <laughs> so whatever gets you through, keep the faith. All right. Lord, bless us as we fast. Lord, let a spirit <laughs> of joy come upon us in intercession, Lord, as we call out for your purposes to be released in our lives and in the lives of those that we love and in our cities, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All right, guys, we'll see you Wednesday. The uh, prayer servant team is coming forward. If you'd like some prayer, please come, come get encouraged. Some of you probably need prayer now, like pray that I make it. Anyway, God bless you guys.